let us, to, let us continue ministering to the Lord in our prayer language, with regular words, in any way that the Holy Spirit leads you. So morie ki osutu, omo kiri mosi, omo di osuti ki e amo suti puri, omo di osuti ki mosu, amo ki amo rositi. Amo ki a sururie, amo rie mosu. Amo kuti sori amo, sturi amo tio. Amo suti e kuri maso, amo ri ki moti anasi. Amo ki amo si tie amo nanasie. Hari amo dorie, amro ri komo tosurie. Amo ru kanuri atosu. Horie mori ano suti. Amo ki amo si tie. Oro di amori, coma suti ori amo, coma tiri di e, amori ani osiri kiri, omaro siri kimo tutu di ano mo, ori o. Praise you, we consecrate to you. Glomasi, Most High God, Lord Jesus. Abba Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach, Ruach Kadosh. Please have your way. Kumari to Suriye. in the worship and in the silence. I am here. I am here. Paul T, 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 Florida has a word. Thank you. Gail, as you were praying in tongues, some of it was in French. Really? Yes. And sourire means smile and laughter. And God said that he was rejoicing over us, smiling over us with cords of love. He was drawing us with cords of love. And he said, I am not angry with you. I love you with an everlasting love. He said, draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. I love you with an everlasting love, and I am smiling, and I am rejoicing over you with cords of love. And that's wow. what you were praying, Gail. Wow. Raise your hands when it's a word from the Lord like that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Does anyone else have anything that they saw or want to share before we start up front? Uh, praise the Lord. And you can have a yeah, seat. Well, uh, it's in my language too. I'm from Sri Lanka. And Surya means sunlight. And you kept on saying the sunlight shining, wow. the sunlight shining. And I was like, oh my gosh, is she talking Sinhalese? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Wow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Anyone else have anything to share? You can have a seat if you want. Um, does it, did you see anything, hear anything? And later on, we'll pass the mic a couple times, okay? Uh, so you'll have a chance if you get anything. It's free here. We have freedom. 
I just wanted to pray into that. Father, I thank you that you're using multiple languages with the same message. Father, and I ask that this is the beginning, so would we be able to have the, the nuance of having the, 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 the variety? And Lord, just as you showed us with French and Singalese that you can speak the same message over us. So Lord, use multiple languages even tonight to let us hear more of your revelation, to let us hear what you're saying over us. Thank you that you're smiling. Thank you that your radiance, that your sunlight is over us. Thank you, Lord, that your presence is before us and that you're not angry, that you're happy and you're pleased. Lord, you're watching us draw nigh to you and it's, it's welling your heart up. It's, it's making you smile even more the nearer we get to you. So Lord, we just confess that we want the nearness. We want the nearness, nothing in between. We want to take your word and you've told us that we can know you as you are known. Just as the son knows the father and the father knows the son, we can know the father and the father can know us. We can know the son and the son can know us. We can know the spirit and the spirit can know us. We want to be known by the Godhead and we want to know the Godhead. So give us the languages that we need to hear what you're saying to us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, we, wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We've got some new people here, so we're going to go into the crest break prayer. And if you just repeat after me, for those of you that are new, um, this is from Derek Prince Ministries. Anything Derek Prince, go to the YouTubes, read, read, read. Get it in its good foundation. This curse break prayer, uh, he always said it takes away about 25% of the curses that can be there in our family line, uh, 25% of diseases. So repeat after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the Son of God and the only way to God, that you died on the cross for my sins, and rose again from the dead. I renounce all my sins and I turn to you. Lord Jesus, for mercy and for forgiveness. And I believe you do forgive me. From now on, I want to live for you. I want to hear your voice and do what you tell me to do. I humble myself and renounce all pride, religious self-righteousness, and any dignity that does not come from you. I have no claim on your mercy, except that you died in my place. In order to receive your blessing, Lord, and to be released from any curse over my life. I confess any known sins committed by me or by my ancestors or others related to me. So now we'll just whisper any personal details to the Lord that you want to confess in yourself or in your generations. Lord, I thank you that I believe you have forgiven everything that I have confessed. And now I want to say, I also forgive all other persons, whoever has harmed me or wronged me. I forgive them all now, as I would have God forgive me. In particular, In particular I, forgive. I forgive. This is the time that we whisper names to the Father, Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit.
when we forgive, we're not saying what they did was right. We're doing it as an act of our will. We're putting them on a fish hook, wiggling, and give them over to Father God, right? Furthermore, Lord, Furthermore, Lord I, renounce I renounce any contact by myself or anyone related to me related to with, Satan, with Satan or with occult power in any form or any kind of secret society. I also commit myself to remove from my house any kind of occult objects that honor Satan and dishonor Jesus Christ. With your help, Lord, I will remove them all. And now, Lord Jesus, I thank you further that on the cross you were made a curse, that I might be redeemed from the curse and might receive the blessing. Because of what you did for me on the cross, I now release myself from every curse, every evil influence, and every dark shadow over me or my family from any source whatever. I release myself now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. So now the minister only says, now, Lord, because of your people's prayer today, Lord, as your representative, break every curse that has been over any of these lives or any of these people. I revoke those curses now, and I release them from them in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Let's give thanks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Now repeat with me. I thank you, Lord that you've heard my prayer and that every curse over my life has been revoked and canceled. I thank you that Satan has no more claims against me or my family or anything else that you've committed to me. I thank you, Lord, that from now on, as I walk in obedience, your blessings will come upon me and overtake me. Hallelujah. Give him, give him gratitude. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to do a covering prayer because we, you know, the things that we do here address strongholds. Sometimes we don't see them. We always say strongholds. We don't see it. Other people do. But you know what? When something gets pointed out, we don't get condemned or feel ashamed. We say, hallelujah, because we get, it, we get rid of it, right? Because sometimes we inherited these things from our family, okay, our generations. So this prayer here is a covering prayer, okay? So we're going to take authority tonight all together in one accord. Father, we thank you that you have given us power and authority over serpents and scorpions, against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, which is our inheritance over the kingdom of darkness. Father, this authority is not achieved because of what we have done but solely by what you have accomplished in and through your beloved Son, whom you were well pleased. That name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, which is above all names in heaven and on earth and below the earth. Now, Father, we declare in Jesus' name, that all strong men, powers, ears, and joint ears, 
plans, orders, assignments are bound. Plans, orders, assignments are bound. Cut, off Cut off and destroyed. The strong man's goods are plundered. The goods are plundered. By the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We sever all communications from you to your workers of iniquity. Here in this place, we also declare that our, all spirits will leave quietly without manifestation or disruption. There'll be no backlash or retaliation. We declare in unity where two or three are gathered, that no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall never prosper. Satan, the Lord rebuke you as we declare the blood of Jesus Christ is against you. Together we stand on the victory of the sacrifice of the cross, the empty tomb, and the resurrection and ascension to heaven of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the Father's acceptance of that blood atonement work. And we thank you, Father for your beloved son's sacrifice and for the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit which raised Jesus from the dead which was sent here to us to comfort seal us teach us lead and guide us into all truth for that and much more we all thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have a short little skit. Uh, the lesson tonight is on self-pity. It's a pretty strong stronghold. And it's a super glue to the past, and it can hinder people from their calling. And they can be in bondage for decades with this thing, so we want to get rid of it tonight. It could be in the family line. It might be a little piece in us. Uh, so this is a cute little skit to kind of show how maybe a family member has self-pity or someone in our church or a friend, and it kind of amplifies in a funny way, but it does show what self-pity is. Also, the other lesson is victimization. Victimization travels in the family line and will bring abusers to us. Uh, a lot of times people that were violated as children or growing up, it's a victimization spirit. It draws abusers like a magnet. You can end up marrying an abusive husband or wife. Okay? And so we want to get rid of that spirit as well. So watch the skit. It's kind of over it's an overdramatized thing, but it gives you an idea how that spirit can be a little manipulative and want its way. So now we're going to go in, oops. We're going to find out a little more about it, and then there's a, a prayer to remove it. So we start off usually with a definition. Pity for oneself, especially, this is key, self-indulgent dwelling on one's own sorrows or misfortunes. That's from Webster's Online. It sounds quite like an addiction. Uh, and whatever you put the most focus on is an addiction. Self-pity can become addictive. And then under the dictionary, we see crying towel, an imaginary towel offered to the kind of person who chronically complains about ill fortune. Complaining, you know, in scripture, God doesn't like that, right? He doesn't like murmuring and complaining. Yeah. Minor defeats or other uh, adversities. 
I find a lot when I'm dealing uh, with self-pity uh, in ministry that this tends to be drama also in the family line. They go hand in hand. The phrase can be used teasingly or judgmentally, implying that one who needs a crying towel is unnecessarily wallowing in self-pity. Uh, cry on someone's shoulder to reveal one's problems to another uh, person in order to get sympathy. Some people have told the same story for 20, 30, 40 years, right? Because they're trapped and they don't know it. So we have to help people. Uh, to assail someone's ear with one's woes in an attempt to win pity or to get moral support or as a form of control and manipulation. Whenever you see control and manipulation, you know there's witchcraft involved, okay? So here's a few synonyms. I'm not going to name them all. But whenever you have uh, something going on and you can get a word for it, look up the synonyms and you'll see in the synonyms there's a lot of manifestations there of what's trying to come on you or at you. Okay, and you can just repent, renounce, ask forgiveness and get rid of those things. Send them, send them out to the dry place. Abomination, atrocity, ache, right? Um, commiseration, crime, dejection, desecration, disgrace, distress, so we know there's going to be distress involved with the spirit. Uh, easygoingness, because they might just give up instead of fighting, right? Uh, feel sorry for. Uh, lament. Laxness. That might make somebody just curl up in a ball and not do what God has for them to do. Patience. Sadness. Sorrow. Tenderness, tolerance, violation. So it gives you a few, a good idea. If you do not cater to self-pity, you will be put on their hit list. Anger will be next, okay? Because that spirit wants its way. So here's some signs indicating self-pity. Most of your thoughts and words are about I, me, and my. And pay attention to this too for when you do ministry with other people. Spirit of replay will have you repeatedly tell your story of hurt. I say, I call it 3D. You know, you ever go to those theaters with the big 3D and you think like it's coming right at you? Well, they're telling their story because it's hurt there that has to come out uh, in 3D to whoever will listen. And that's a sign of unforgiveness that's hiding. A habit of saying or asking, why me or poor me? Or do you know what they did to me? Feelings of injustice or unfairness. Uh, may say, I always mess up. I can never do anything right. right? A self-pity method of gaining attention can be learned as a child. False martyrs will draw attention by using hurts or disease to get sympathy. True martyr lays their life down for the right reasons and joy. So self-pity is a super glue of hell that keeps us in our past. Pity is a choice. Can we say that together? Pity is a choice. It takes as much effort to be sad as it is to be happy. Self-pity is like a drug. And that's by Pastor Henry Wright. Uh, he has a, a ministry, Be in Health Georgia. That's where Greg and I were trained. It binds us to unforgiveness because we continually, we're continually rehearsing what happened to us. You feel like you have a right to not forgive and are justified to feel sorry for yourself. Self-pity is a form of a highest and hidden pride manifested from weakness of the flesh and a form of idolatry of self. We can feel sorry for a while, but if it ends up to be a long, long time and it hinders us from our call of God, there's people that it's gone on for decades. They've missed being married, having children. They've missed a couple of opportunities that the Lord tried to open the door for 
But the thing is, we don't go into any kind of panic over this because we serve a God that redeems the time and continually brings us opportunities because he loves us, okay? Um, and it can be related to boasting. In other words, telling that story is like rele releasing a valve on that spirit, releasing that valve because uh, it's all stored up in there. Boasting equals pride in success. Self-pity equals pride in suffering. And self-pity will even use disease to get attention. And some of the diseases can come in because of self-pity. We don't want that. So self-pity is fear-based and anesthetizes its victim. This person could even come to the point where they're just in bed all the time and don't want to get up. Self-pity numbs the pain and puts one to sleep. Self-pity cannot accept responsibility for their life. It must be something else or someone else responsible for the situation. Self-pity will have you to sit down and immobilize. It will not allow consistent moving forward or overcoming. The spirit of self-pity will want to destroy and avoid anything that will initiate its removal. It will fight. It will punish others who do not feed its needs. It, will, it is self-perpetuating based in fear, therefore planning to be fulfilled in the future. What we fear is fulfilled in the future. It will have fam family members coddle and submit to its demands. We weep for those who weep. This is empathy. When we minister from old hurts, this can bring on codependency, like fill a need to be needed. This spirit can use old wounds to manipulate others to give sympathy. This feeds the self-pity spirit and keeps it in place, making it stronger and wearing out the people around it. Self-pity will go everywhere for a prayer, but will refuse to change. And that goes with any of the strongholds, right? Uh, we can go and get lots of prayer, but we've got to be willing to change and walk in what God's word says. Family members must be strong and work with ministers called in to deliver their loved one from self-pity. At first, the person will receive the minister with joy. And this is a very common thing. You can almost count on it. Next, to the, um, next the spirit of self-pity wants the minister and the people around them to take on self-pity. The deliverance minister in the family must confront self-pity and not coddle it. It must be brought out in the open. Family members can be codependent with self-pity. They have been trained by manipulation because sometimes this can be going on for years. You can even have someone in your congregation, in ministry, and you'll recognize this and you'll know that they've been you know, carrying this for a long time. Because this, this just isn't taught yet in the churches. I'm believing that God's going to bring deliverance to every church. There'll be extreme resistance from the spirit. Even extreme foul language will manifest. This is very common. Okay? This spirit will say attempts to remove it off from the devil. That's the first thing comes out. Self-pity will turn away from the minister. I've had it happen exactly like this. Refuse to cooperate. Doesn't want to look into the eyes of the minister because, see, when you do deliverance, you should have your eyes open. And when you pray from someone, keep your eyes open. Because if there's a spirit there that can all clobber you with your eyes closed. <laughs> so pray with your eyes open. Um, okay. Self-pity will say the minister is insensitive and unloving and doesn't care. Right? God cannot move in the life of a person living in the past. Self-pity cannot be removed without faith. It'll hinder you from accomplishing what Father God has written 
in his book for you. Let's read this together, 1 Samuel 15. For stubbornness is idolatry. You cannot reason with self-pity. Let's read this one, 1 Peter 5, 6. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And let's do this one, Romans 6, 6. We know that our old, unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body, which is the instrument of sin, might be made ineffective and inactive for evil, that we might no longer be slaves of sin. And then let's do John 8, 34, 36. Jesus answered them, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, whoever commits and practices sin is the slave of sin. Now a slave does not remain in the household permanently forever. The son of the house does remain forever. So if the son liberates you, makes you free men, then you are really and unquestionably free. Do you see that last scripture that we just read? One who commits and practices sin is a slave of sin, right? A slave does not remain in the household of the father forever. Do you see why we can't, you know, with this hyper grace that they are teaching that everything's okay, it's not. Because we don't want to be slaves. We want to be sons and daughters, right? Uh, now it says that the son of the house remains forever. That means we learn obedience to God because we love him. We want to obey him. And a lot of times we'll always hear, if the son liberates you, makes you free, then you're really free indeed. Well, we need to read the verses before that to have a bigger understanding, right? So 1 John 2, 16 to 17. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh read it with me, craving for sensual gratification and the lust of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind and the pride of life, assurance in one's own resources or in the stability of the earthly things. These do not come from the Father but are from the world itself and the world passes away and disappears and with it the forbidden cravings, the passionate desires, the lust of it, but he who does the will of God, Romans 12, and carries out his purposes in his life, abides and remains forever. Hallelujah. So John Gill commentary, uh, he was a Greek and Hebrew scholar, so sometimes I like using some of his things. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body as sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin, that the body of sin might be destroyed. By the body of sin is meant sin itself, which consists, as a body does, of various members. So the body of sin, various members, and also the power and strength of it, which the Jews called, I won't even attempt that. I bet you Danielle could read it. Um, the power of the evil imagination. This is crucified with Christ and nailed to his cross by his sacrifice and satisfaction that its damning power might be destroyed, abolished, and done away, right? But you know the evil imaginations. We get thirty to 60,000 thoughts a day according to the medical community. We're supposed to take our thoughts cap captive to the obedience of Christ, his word, so that's a full-time job, you know, saying these thoughts. I always say Philippians 4 or out the door. Philippians 4 or out the door. You've got to be an umpire, right? Because these evil imaginations, they want to sneer us. They want to get us. And after a while, when they can't, when they see that we're strong, resist the devil and he will flee, right? Um, let's see. And it cru is crucified by the spirit and grace of Christ that its governing power might be took away and that itself be subdued, weakened, laid under restraints, and its members and deeds mortified. That henceforth we should not serve sin. That means we don't practice it. Every single one of us, me included, 
you know, misstep. <laughs> Things happen, right? Um, and so we just repent quickly, and, and we're growing because we are becoming new. We're, we're, we're in present progressive. We, it's not instant the day that we receive Christ. We are progressively being renewed and walking in sanctification, right? The, the devil tries to beat us up and say, oh, you know, you, you should have it all done. You should be, you should be all set. You're still, look, you're still, you're still. No, we, we're in process. So you tell the devil, you know, buzz off. You know, take a hike. You know, I'm not listening to you. That henceforth we should not serve sin, not that it should not be in us, right? For as yet, neither by virtue of the sacrifice of Christ, nor by the power of his grace, is sin as to its being removed from the people of God. We're still going to have the sin principle in us. It says it in Romans 7, the sin principle that's in our organs, right? Um, but that we should not serve it, make provision for it, indulge it, and obey it in the lust thereof, right? So in the Strong's, number 264, not many places say that word, sin, right? But it means to miss the mark, to err or be mistaken. We make mistakes. We're human. To miss or wander from the path of uprightness and honor, to do or go wrong, to wander from the law of God and violate God's law. Right? We have the moral law of Christ that we're to obey. Right? We're supposed to obey the commandments. It says, those who love me do my commandments in the New Testament. So now the definition of might, the power, authority, or resources wielded as by an individual or group, like here we have power, because it's corporate deliverance, bodily strength, energy, intensity, of which one is capable, striving with might. The synonyms for might would be energy, firepower, force or horsepower, muscle, right? Strength, vigor, those are just a few. Now, what's the antonyms? Impotence, impotency, powerlessness, and weakness. We have authority with Christ over the body of sin. We must appropriate this authority, and we choose moment by moment who we'll serve. We are in charge of the land of our soul which is the mind and the will and the emotions, right? Romans 6.13, let's read this together. Do not continue offering or yielding your bodily members and faculties to sin as instruments or tools of wickedness, but offer and yield yourselves to God as though you've been raised from the dead to perpetual life and your bodily members and faculties to God, presenting them as implements of righteousness. So neither yield ye your members. The apostle more fully explains what he means by obeying sin and the lusts of thereof, of presenting or making use of the members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. By their members, he means the several powers and faculties of the soul. And so the Ethiopic version renders it your souls or the several parts of the body or both by yielding or presenting of them is designed the employment of them in the service of sin. And that's what the enemy tries to do. As instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, that is as means of performing unrighteous actions in obedience to sin, or the corruption of the nature with its lusts. The word translated is instruments, and it signifies arms or weapons. So the ancients formerly reckoned weapons, the members of soldiers, and here the apostle calls the members weapons, which he would not have the saints use in favor of sin. An enemy and a tyrant for that would be unrighteous in itself and injurious to God and themselves, says he, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. That is, present themselves soul and body to God, 
give up and devote themselves to him. Draw a line in the sand. This is it. I'm yours. I consecrate myself to you. I give my body as a living sacrifice. My faculties, I renew my mind. Romans 12. And the rest of the chapter is all on God's will. If you want to know his will. And to his service. And yield a cheerful obedience to him. Considering themselves as under great obligation. And as much as they are freed. We are free from condemnation and death. We are free. Can you say that? We are free. By the righteousness of Christ and quickened when dead in trespasses and sin by his spirit and grace. And therefore should yield our members, our whole selves, as instruments or weapons of righteousness unto God. I like thinking that I'm a weapon. <laughs> I kind of like that. <laughs> Right? By fighting against sin, I say I like to take a Uzi out <laughs> and get it that way, you know, because I like shooting guns. You know, I, I like going to the shooting gallery and, and doing all that. That's my USA stuff. But uh, reven revenging all disobedience, fulfilling obedience to the commands of God, the same is meant here as putting on the armor of light putting on his armor of light. Romans 13, 12, and wearing and making use of the armor of righteousness on the right hand and the left. And you can look up 2 Corinthians 6, 7. This will be on YouTube, so you can always go back and look at it. And the text will be there as well. Self-pity can be an addiction. It's like a drug. What poison is to food, self-pity is to life. Can we say that together? What poison is to food, self-pity is to life. It's one of the highest manifestations of pride. Doesn't want to listen, interrupts, talks incessantly. You may wonder how they breathe, okay? That can also have an unloving spirit working with it, right? It works well with depression, and a person walking in it will have extreme manipulation tendencies. When you do not yield to it, prepare for anger. And when you do not cater to it, you may end up on the person's hit list of retaliation, which would be like an armor of bitterness, right? But you have to remember, any time that we're dealing with this, even with ourselves, we're not dealing with flesh and blood. If we've got somebody in our house that's got self-pity or in our congregation or we're doing ministry with somebody, it's not them. It's a spirit. And it probably has been in the generation for a long time. So we want them to get free, right? That's all we care about is being obedient to God and getting them free. So the spirit is fear-based. In an adult, pity becomes a burden to the carrier and to the poor people who have to live with them. Self-pity produces a pitiful life. That's its fruit. It paralyzes your thoughts and feelings and will try to punish others. It wants to destroy and control the people around it. Self-pity wants to blame others or the person themselves. Very little changes will happen in a life that remains captive to self-pity. The person that succumbs to this may not be an overcomer. That's why we just want to work with them the best we can. Revelation 2, 7. Let's read this together. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So in the Strong's, number 3528, overcometh. Let's see what, it, what uh, that means when it gets expanded. To conquer, to carry off the victory, come off victorious of Christ, victorious over 
How many foes? All. All his foes of Christians that hold fast their faith even unto death against the power of their foes and temptations and persecutions. We're seeing this all the time. Right now, we're blessed. We're not under persecution. But there's a lot of our brothers and sisters in other countries, young children and everything, they want them to renounce Christ and they get their heads chopped off. So hold fast their faith even unto death. When one is arraigned or goes to law to win the case, maintain one's cause. Well, that's to do with the courtroom of heaven, right? When you're talking about courtroom, a case. Now, in the Strong's 2222, life in that scripture, the state of one is possessed of vitality or is inanimate. Every living soul of the absolute fullness of life both essential and ethical, which belongs to God, and through him, both to the hypostatic logos and to Christ, in whom the logos put on human nature. Life real and genuine, a life active and vigorous, devoted to God. And what is it? Blessed, right? Blessed in the portion, even in this world, We're supposed to be blessed in this world of those who put their trust in Christ. But after the resurrection, to be consummated by new, what? Ascensions. Among them, a more perfect body. Yay. And to last forever. Right? So when we look up the word ascensions in the, like, Strong's 2222, in the synonyms, look up the word ascensions, It alludes to our assignments a billion years from now and for all eternity. The synonyms are clear that this is our rewards, positions, and assignments. It will be according to our record of obedience here and also the what doctrine we have in our souls. The Lord clearly showed me in a vision that a grandmother on her knees will have a higher position than a high official of this world, like a president of a nation in eternity. 1 Samuel 15, 23. Let's read it together. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Genesis 3, 11 to 12. Adam did not cover his wife. Adam blamed his wife and did not take responsibility. This can be an ingredient in self-pity, right? Blaming someone else. We must take responsibility in our lives and fight the good fight against the kingdom of Ephesians 6. The length and quality of our life here depends on this, as well as our assignments for eternity. So what's the antidote for self-pity? Romans 12, 1 to 2. Give your body, self, as a living sacrifice. Consecrate. Renew your mind with God's word. And then read the rest of 12, Romans 12, it's God's will. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Let's read it together. Take thoughts captive. No one can do this for you. Let's go to the next one. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. In verse 16, it says, rejoice. Verse 18, give thanks. Praise God. Revelation 12, 11. Let's read it together. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. We are blessed in our moment of time. We do not have to die martyrs. We need only our flesh to die. When, and praise God, when we get rid of the pain and regrets, we are on the road to maturity. And boy, do we have a testimony, amen? amen. Praise the Lord, we all have a testimony. Colossians 1, to 29. If... If is always a big word for me, right? 
uh, yes, ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled. And here's another John Gill commentary. In the doctrine of faith, which they had received and embraced, we've all received and embraced, right? And in the grace of faith and the exercise of it, which was implanted in them, and in the profession of our faith, which they had made, not that the virtue and efficacy of Christ's blood, suffering, death, and reconciliation of their persons to God depended on our faith and abiding it, but that the faith and continuance continuance, continuance in it (laughs) were necessary Means of their presentation. Presentation of what? Unblemished holiness and righteousness. Right? For if they had not faith or did not abide in it, or if the good work of grace was not wrought upon their souls and that performed until the day of Christ, grace is there till the day of Christ, they could not be presented holy and blameless. This shows the necessity of the saints' final perseverance. Perseverance in what? Faith and holiness. And it's mentioned with this in view to put them upon a concern. In other words, we should be thinking about this. And to make use of all means under divine grace. Because, um, what is it? Titus 2, I think it's 11 to 13. Grace trains us. Right? So make use of all means under divine grace to enjoy it, and nothing could do more strongly incline and move unto it than the blessed effect of Christ's death, reconciliation, and the end of it to present reconciled ones, us, blameless, in order to which it's necessary they should hold on. We stay faithful to the end, right? Luke 10, 27. Let's read it together. And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Real agape love is not self-focused. It's focused on others. It doesn't walk around talking about oneself all the time. I am me, I am me, I am me. Right? So tame your tongue. And that's lesson 10. We do that one. In a book by Cindy Jacobs on warfare, she had a list regarding some of the rights we must give up in order to tear down those things we don't see, the strongholds, right? The first thing to conquer in the spiritual battle of self, die to self. We, then we give up the right to be offended, the right to our time, because really we We should be, what God, what do you want me to do today, right? The right to do what we want with our possessions. The right to self-pity. The right to self-justification. The right to be understood. And the right to criticize. Some diseases that may have a root in self-pity, and this isn't all-inclusive. There's probably 2,000 diseases now cataloged. They've been working with a lot of medical doctors and universities but you got the multiple chemical sensitivity, MCSE, eczema, rheumatoid arthritis, interstitial cystitis, cancer profiles, autoimmune, any kind of autoimmune. So you ready to kick it out? The people that are here that are new, uh, we do a renounce and we say some things that maybe you haven't done, but these are things that are known to be connected with self-pity, and with the other fruit. So we speak it and renounce it because it can be from our generation and our family line. We're cleaning ourselves up, but we're also cleaning our generation. So repeat after me, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I choose to confess, repent, and renounce and forsake participation with self-pity. I ask for forgiveness and renounce all curses associated with the spirits assigned to me and that the curse be broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
I recognize and take responsibility in the generations of my family. I recognize and take responsibility in the generations of my family. On both sides. On both sides. Going back to Adam and Eve. For our participation with all spirits of self pity. I release myself from any guilt, shame, condemnation, and any curses due to self pity. Lord Jesus, I shatter, cut off, and dissolve the power of the spirits of. Self pity, -pity. depression, Depression. debate, Debate. legalism, Legalism. self righteousness, -righteousness. opinionated, Opinionated. criticize, Criticize. little faith, faith. guilt, Guilt. shame. Shame. I can't, can't. stubbornness, Stubbornness. idolatry, Idolatry. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. witchcraft, rebellion. Rejection, Rejection. bitterness, Bitterness. unforgiveness, Unforgiveness. excessive talking, talking. offense, Offense. blame, Blame. spirit of replay, replay. powerlessness, Powerlessness. addiction, Addiction. retaliation, Retaliation. murmuring, Murmuring. complaining, Complaining. Idolatry. idolatry, manipulation, Control, Control. pride, Pride. any python, Python. kundalini, Kundalini. leviathan, Leviathan. by the blood of Jesus, Jesus. in the name of Jesus, Jesus. I cut off your head head. and command you to come up and out and and go to the dry place now. False martyr, martyr. fear, Fear. torment, Torment. Torment. wrong thoughts, thoughts. Weakness. weakness. Indulgence, Indulgence. not discerning the body, body. resentment, Resentment. hindering spirit, not wanting godly change. change. This is where we pass the mic. If you hear anything that we should renounce, share it because it helps all of us. Uh, We'll pass the mic and uh, see, does anybody have anything to add to the renounce list? Raise your hand. Drama. Spirit of drama. Drama. Anything else? Okay, we pretty much got it. Okay. In my life. In my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cancel all of Satan's power and authority over me. Because of self pity, in Jesus' mighty name, I cast you out and command you to go quietly now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command all tormentors and principalities of bitterness, self bitterness, jealousy and envy, rejection, fear. Doubt and unbelief, unbelief, occult, occult, and any other spirits spirits that have been assigned to me me because of self pity -pity, to leave me now now, without causing any damage damage, and go to the dry place. place. Father God, God, thank you for the Holy Spirit, for the the Lord Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing my heart, my my soul. Mind, will, and emotions, and body. Please cleanse me and refill me and reveal your loving words of truth to me. So quietly listen and see if you hear anything, feel anything. Sometimes you feel lighter. Sometimes you just know that it's gone.
Does anybody have anything to share? Uh, back right. And once we do the sharing, I'm going to command it to come out because sometimes it needs to be commanded out besides just renouncing. Thank you. Um, so I saw like an image of uh, it looked like a turtle shell or something, and I got the impression that uh, many of us saints, I know it's something I'm guilty of, is hiding in our comfort zones. Um, so I feel like we're to renounce something about like idolizing our comforts or whatever the word for that might be. So that's a, that's a good one, Liam. Thank you. So just say, I repent. I repent. Renounce and ask forgiveness for hiding in my comfort zone or in the cave. I renounce it. I confess it as sin. And I command all spirits involved to come up and out and go to the dry place in Jesus' mighty name. Anyone else have anything before I do the final cast out? Period. And then Agnes. I keep getting dissension. Deception? Dissension. Dissension? Deception. Or deception. Oh, deception. Yeah. Dissension. Oh, dissension, division. Yeah. Dissension. Okay, just say, I repent. I repent. Renounce. Renounce. And ask forgiveness. And ask forgiveness. For any participation, for any participation. With, dissension with dissension or division. Or division. In, Jesus name, In Jesus' mighty name, I confess it as sin. I, it as sin. I repent and renounce. I repent and, renounce. And, ask and ask forgiveness and command it Amen. to come up and out and go to the dry place. In Jesus' mighty name. I was getting one word, stubbornness. And you know what? I think we, uh, we had stubbornness in there because it's it a, in, yeah. with the idolatry. Yeah. So that's a yeah. good one, though. Anyone else? Blame. 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 Uh, I can't remember if it was in there or not. So let's just do I repent, Amen. renounce, Amen. And ask forgiveness for any participation with blame. I renounce it, confess it as sin, command it to come up and out in Jesus' mighty name with all underlings and overlings and gatekeepers and go to the dry place. And just Father God, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, would you please cleanse me? Heal me and refill me. Okay, so Father God, these saints have repented and renounced and asked forgiveness for self-pity. All underlings, overlings, and gatekeepers, I command any self-pity to come up and up, up and out right now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Come up and out right now in Jesus' mighty name. All spirits involved with it. Come up and out right now. In Jesus' mighty name, you lost your legal right. All resistant spirits, you're bound. I command you to come up now. In Jesus' mighty name. All fear, up and out in Jesus' mighty name. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Praise God for your freedom. You. Hallelujah. I'm going to give I'm going to give you a choice tonight. Um usually we do victimization. This is a spirit and it's a short lesson. It's a spirit that comes in when we've had some sort of abuse. It can be abuse by work or Abuses when we're children, abuse, you know, by parents. Yeah, and right now we just uh, stretch out our hands to the children. We plead the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus over them, and there'll be nothing that will uh, affect or touch 
them in any way, uh, we touch and agree. The blood of Jesus is over them, and there's no transfer of spirits in Jesus' mighty name. Do you want to do the quick victim spirit and get it out? Because a lot of times it travels in the family line. If we've been violated as children, it can travel and go and violate our grandchildren. Uh, so it's nice to, you know, especially if they're under the age of accountability, it's nice to get this kicked out. So I'll just keep on going then. Definition of victimize, to make victim of, subject to deception or fraud. So that victim spirit can even cheat us, right, out of positions and money or anything like that, promotion, subject to deception or fraud, cheat, victim as a living being offered as a living sacrifice, an individual injured or killed by disease or accident, a person cheated, fooled or injured, a victim of circumstances, or even accident prone. And that can come in with Freemason. We advise everybody to do the Freemason Renounce Prayer that's on our website. You can grab a card. Just don't do it alone. Okay? Um, and somebody made a good point the other day. If it's two family members doing it together, it's the same bloodline, have someone else there. I thought that was really meaty. That was really meaty the other day. Um, so, um, let's see. Webster's Dictionary. So, some synonyms. Cheat, bleed, chisel, defraud, uh, hustle, uh, ream, rip off, shake down, short change, skunk, to stick someone, uh, swindle, and fleece. Those are a few that I read, right? So overcoming the victim spirit, and this is from Arthur Burke Plumline Ministries, but this is so good, it's so meaty. What is the victim spirit? It can refer to one of two things. A mindset that people develop that they can invite victimization from others or an actual demon presence, right, attracted to people to cause identifiable and undesirable consequences. In reality, the two are intertwined. The victim spirit of an individual begins in the mindset, opening the doorway to demon oppression. In what ways does the victim spirit pervade one's life? Here are some worst case scenarios. Boundaries. Your personal boundaries, if you have any, are consistently violated by others as if they treat you in contempt. Abuse. You're easily trapped by people who want to physically, sexually, emotionally, spiritually, or financially abuse you and you excuse their behavior as inevitable because that's what you deserve. Sometimes we can get this mindset, right, when we've lived in abuse all our life. Dishonor. People who are normally gracious with others are drawn into taking cheap shots at your face. Deception. You accept abuse from others because you're used to it and don't see that there's another way to live. Ministry. You don't feel worthy of being able to share what you've learned about God. That's why we pass the mic in here, because we need your puzzle piece. Values. You easily absorb the values of the secular world around you, and it can lead to carnality. Joy. You have none, nor any hope of having any. You're numb to the world around you, and that, we do a lesson on bitterness. Bitterness can steal your joy. Potential, as far as you're concerned, you have no potential. Only the people around you are worth anything, even if they're perpetrators of abuse. Curses and blessing. You're cursed from birth by the family you're born into. Your sex, appearance, personality, everything about you is cursed and you feel you have no future. Now where would that thought be coming from? It'd be from the enemy camp, right? In what ways does the victim spirit manifest itself? This is a few examples. Destruction, unconscious self-destruction, and being accident prone. Injustice, consistently finding yourself in situations where the rules are being violated at your expense, and there's nothing you can do about it. Malpractice, always picking the doctor that's most incompetent. And usually I tell a story uh, when I was teaching 
here in Canada in the very early days, about four years ago, there was a girl the uh, mother had passed away. She had diabetes come at her. You know, you're careful. You pick out your doctors, right? But they picked out a doctor, and uh, she had to have a leg amputated. Well, they amputated the wrong one. And so she had the bo both legs amputated. Well, that would be a victim spirit traveling in the family line. There was a heavy Freemason in that family. And um, the mo she died young. The mother and the daughter couldn't get over it, she, and the thoughts were just overtaken. You know, she had to learn to take control of her thoughts, but it just shows you, see? Um, devouring, constantly having people take advantage of you financially, not being able to get a grip on your finances, having constant emergencies that drain your bank account or put you in debt. Defilement, being a target for sexual advances or innuendo, no matter how modestly you act or dress. The victim spirit is like a big megaphone calling these people around you in, like a magnet, right? Abuse, a habitual attraction to the wrong kind of relationships. Don't we want to get rid of this thing, right? So how does walking in God's dominion mandate chains in your life? Well, with the boundaries. Predators pull back from you and everyone around you. People are safer when they're around you, right? When we have our identity in Christ, we have that boldness and confidence. We have his word in here, right? We know who we are. Nobody's going to stomp on us. Respect versus abuse. Others protect and neuter you because you're with it and you know it. Honor versus dishonor. Honor naturally flows towards you in formal and informal ways. And we're going to believe that all this is coming in to effect when we do this renounce, right? Um, you recognize that God your Father loves you for who you are and blesses you with gifts throughout the day. Isn't that the word that we got tonight, how much he loves us? Wow. Ministry, you deeply desire greater power and anointing to make a difference in the lives of those around you. Values, you embrace God's values and not the world's. And because of this, you have power to change the entire culture. Joy, your anointing is so infectious that it infects the land, the surroundings, the people you're around. And joy remains after you're gone. Potential. Let's read this together. You seek God to find out from him his design of your nature and his call on your life. Curses and blessings. There's life-giving virtue in your words. The words are important. And thanks to Plum Line Ministry for this information. A victim spirit really operates alone. Its job is to attract other demon spirits. Self-pity and victimization work well together. Self-pity says you're entitled that you are a victim. A person trapped in this bondage will see no way out and eventually can give up and settle for a much less blessed life than what God has for them. They do not receive compliments or affirmation because they feel they're unworthy. Trapped, they may turn to alcohol and drugs. They'll attempt to smother their hurts away. Another way would be to become a workaholic or perfectionism. Addiction spirit joins in with food, drugs, alcohol, work. They criticize and dishonor themselves with unfriendly inner self-talk. When we say things like that about ourselves, a our hypothalamus is recording, it's, it's a scanner, and it's pumping the chemicals going to different parts of our body. There'll be an over, overabundance of chemicals because of these negative inner self-talks, right? So we want our words, right, to be affirming. We gotta watch our words because our words Change our DNA. You know how to use a light switch, right? Ding, 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 like that. Well, we change our DNA like that moment by moment with our words. 
Okay? That's a proven medical thing. So when someone around you is unhappy, you own their negativity and apologize though it's not your fault and you assume blame. That's false burden bearing. Others may try to suppress the emotional pain with endless work and busyness. People may offer nurturing, but it won't be accepted because the victimized person feels unworthy of love and attention. Where's that coming from? The enemy. Negative thinking and confusion are two of the fruits of victimization. The victim will tend to assume the worst, therefore they actually project more of the same into their future with stinking thinking. Torment can come from victimization. This happens from continual replay, like a button, of trauma incidents over and over. There's a spirit of replay that does this. We must go back to lesson two, bitterness and unforgiveness, and remember that unforgiveness keeps a record of wrongs. And we'll be doing that lesson again. This spirit likes to orchestrate a trauma event in children, might be sexual, to get an early start. The child may receive special treatment in the daylight hours to justify violation in the night or with a, when alone with the violator. National statistics say 33% of females are molested before 18 and 25% of males molested by age 18. Statistics say every granddaughter of a molested woman will be molested. They don't know why. Well, because it's a spirit that must be dealt with. And this happens because the spirit travels in the generations. Victims, predators, their familiar spirits, as an example. So this spirit quenches our belief in God's promises and steals our identity in Christ. It will have a person constantly focusing on climbing out of the mud pit. It will have one believe that her husband had a bad day at work, and this is why he beats and abuses, making wrong things seem right. It will have a woman think she's submitting, and this is her bed, she made it, so now she must lie in it. Pastor Henry Wright at Be In Health teaches we are not to submit to sin out of love. Abuse is sin, whether it be physical, verbal, or financial. God's taking note of abusers, okay? It's not unseen. We must take responsibility to be set free of a victim spirit. When we deal with the unloving, because there's unlovingness there, there's probably a broken heart there. Rejection, victim spirits, we must take our thoughts captive as we walk out of the influence of these spirits that have had us, us in a, in a, been in our generations. We must be beacons of light and life givers instead of operating in a draining spirit of victimization. And we must stop living to enable the predator. Stop thinking that if you enable them better, you will have less pain. It's not going to work. You're dealing with a spirit. You're not dealing with flesh and blood. We are not to agree with the enemy and say that, for example, all males in the bloodline die by 60 years old. We would never say that. That is a negative vow. It's a curse. Or that cancer runs in the family tree. Instead, we say, I shall, die. I, I shall not die but live. And we speak against these lies of the enemy and cancel these curses, right? In Jesus' mighty name. Removal of victimization. We go forward and form boundaries, borders, and backbone. And the temporary pain of changing, because there is pain when we do change, one's life for the better is well worth the battle, especially since future generations are involved, right? Take all thoughts captive. We practice the eight R's. This is what we teach. This is walk out. This is sanctification. This is helping us finish to the end, faithful. We recognize, we take responsibility, we repent, we renounce, we remove it, we resist it because it will try to come back. We rejoice and then go restore someone else. We read and speak God's word to enact change daily. We take pills sometimes when we have prescription. 
well, we need to have little, I have little square things. I call them the gospel. I put it in a little Ziploc bag. And you read that three, four times a day, right? Uh, set up godly boundaries, reject all abuse, and neglect, and find out your identity in Christ. Where does that come from? The word. Amen. The word. I love Psalm 119. That's been my favorite psalm since I've been saved. If you read that, get a box of tissues. Because, I mean, the, I, I, today when I read it, I, I need a box of tissues when I speak it out. Um, step out into God's plan for you. Step out of the boat, right? So you ready to kick it out? Okay, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I choose to confess, repent, and renounce and forsake participation with victimization spirit. I ask for forgiveness and renounce all curses associated with the spirits assigned to me and that the curse be broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I recognize and take responsibility in the generations of my family on both sides going back to Adam and Eve for our participation with all spirits of victimization. I release myself from any guilt, shame, condemnation and any curses Due to victimization. Lord Jesus, I shatter, cut off, and dissolve the power of the spirits of victimization, occultism, unliving, I mean unloving, unforgiveness, bitterness, unbelief, abuse, molestation, perversion. Predator, Predator. Dishonor. dishonor, criticize, criticize. Stolen, innocence. stolen innocence, lack of respect, lack of respect. Unloving. unloving, masturbation, masturbation. Porn. porn, oral or anal sex, or anal sex. foul and unclean spirits, and unclean spirits. Abortion. abortion, voting for abortion, voting for abortion. murder, Murder in the womb, womb. self-pity, Self false burden bearing. I break all ungodly soul ties. In the name of Jesus, I take my pieces back. I give the others their pieces back to them. Inner correcting, Inner correcting. Cheated. cheated, powerless, powerless. trapped. Anger, Anger. Deceived. deceived, torment, torment. Trauma. trauma, disrespect, disrespect. False, humility. false humility, not discerning the body, discerning the body. Harassed. harassed, unworthy, unworthy. Enabler. enabler, fear, fear. Violated. violated, suppression, suppression. Neglect. neglect, toleration, Tolerate. corrupted mindset. Rejection. Rejection, arrested development, arrested development. Deaf, and dumb spirit. deaf and dumb spirit. Any anyone have anything that they want to add that we didn't say, that you're getting a word that we should? Raise your hand. Okay. Blindness. Blindness. Yeah. Blindness, spiritual blindness and regular blindness. And regular blindness. Anyone else? Up front? Oh, okay. Control? Control. Uh, Robin, right uh, here yeah. in the front. Raise your hand. Sorry. Okay. Who's that? Impatience. Impatience. Right. Anyone else have anything? Is that it? 
Okay, in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cancel all of Satan's power and authority over me. Because of victimization. In Jesus' mighty name. I cast you out. And command you to go quietly now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command all tormentors. And principalities of bitterness. Self-bitterness. Jealousy and envy. Rejection. Fear. Doubt and unbelief. Occult. And any other spirits. That have been assigned to me. Because of victimization, to leave me now without causing any damage and go to the dry place. Father God, thank you for the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for healing my heart, my soul, mind, will, and emotions, and body. Please refill me, cleanse me. Heal me and reveal your loving words of truth to me. So these saints have repented and renounced and asked forgiveness. Regarding a victimization spirit. So I command the victimization spirit to come up and out in Jesus' mighty name. You lost your legal right. Up and out. In Jesus' mighty name. Put your hand right in the back of your head. Right now we speak to the amygdala and anything to do with victimization or self-pity, spirits, trauma, post-traumatic stress. In Jesus' mighty name, we command you to leave now and go to the dry place and we command that the the amygdala would go back to the normal size. In Jesus' mighty name, put your hand on your heart. Father God, right now, thank you for the anointing. We just ask you that you would heal every broken heart, every area that your anointing would fill every area in their heart. In Jesus' mighty name, command all victimization up and out in Jesus' mighty name. Go to the dry place. Underlings, overlings, and gatekeepers have to come out. All trauma to do with any incidents comes up and out in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, we give glory to God. Hallelujah for your freedom. Take a deep breath. (gasps) Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. It's done. It's done. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does anybody have anything to share before we close? Flavita? I, I just want to thank the Lord for uh, this ministry. And uh, for years and years, every time uh, my picture was taken or I was with someone, as soon as the flash, the camera would flash, my eyes would cr- would close or else there would be trauma on me and uh, so today when I was out with John it's his birthday um, you could happy s- birthday <laughs> yeah Thank you. and we John must have taken about five pictures and all you could see over my eyes was trauma and fear and uh, the Lord brought back to me when I was a child that my mother used to take me in the back of the circus and there was abuse. But I was forced to look into the guy that he would hypnose me. And I was six years old. So that was a victimized spirit. And, um, but anyways, Gail prayed with me over the, the phone and John prayed with me also. 
And I just want to give God the glory that the Lord has set me free. When I get my next picture, <laughs> my eyes will be open. There will be no fear and no trauma and no victimization. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anyone else have anything to share before we close? Hallelujah. Right in the center aisle. The testimonies built the faith of everyone. I also want to thank you. Ever since I've come here, every single session, my life has been affected by it. So I just want to thank you that layer by layer is coming off. And tonight is an incredible night because I was victimized when I was younger too. And, and I'm going to believe that everything that we do now will just bring God the glory and I will be totally set free. And uh, I just want to thank you for what you're doing. Amen. In Jesus' name. And I just want, right now want to speak, Father God, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, that every incident, any incidents of violations, that the body is cleansed by the blood of Jesus, the eyes are cleansed, the mouth, the ears, the heart, the reproductive areas, any orifices, any hairs, skin, mucosal tissue right now with the blood of Jesus. I speak a cleansing now in Jesus' mighty name that the molecules of emotion that the medical industry speaks about cleansed by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus and that the DNA be cleansed, the amygdala be cleansed, those replay memories, let them be used only for testimonies, not for replaying and bringing back trauma. We raise our hands in belief in Jesus' mighty name that we are all cleansed. In Jesus' mighty name, we give him all the praise and the glory. Amen. Anyone else before we close? Yeah, I'm free. Wow, okay. Praise God. Praise God. Um, up front, Sandra. Thanks. Uh, well, after I came back to the Lord, I had three years of, of waywardness. I came back to the Lord, and I went to Montreal to visit this friend of mine that Speak I up a little. grew up with, and um, uh, we, she wanted me to, to visit these two people at her church, so I said, okay, so we went to this prayer meeting, and the prayer meeting was canceled, and this young man came up who my friend knew, and we decided, well, we'd go to a fellowship down at Atwater and to the McDonald's because there was no church service. So we went down there, and we got our stuff, and we're sitting at the table, and this young man came with us. And as we're talking, and I'm, you know, introduced myself to these two ladies, this young man kept getting after this friend of mine. And finally, I'd had enough, and I said, what is your problem? And he said to me that he uh, loved this woman, and he didn't know, know how to get her to love him. And I said, well, you know, you need to really just move on and, and, and not worry about it because, you know, it's, it's not a relationship when you only have one person loving you. So he said, but I love this woman and I want to marry her. And I says, you need to dump her and move on. You know, it's only going to be an abusive situation if you get involved in this marriage. Because you have one person loving the other person and catering to them. And the other person just taking advantage. I said, you need to get rid of this and move on. And he says, you know, every time that you talk to me, he says, I get confused. And I said... Well, you know who the author of confusion is, don't you? Now, hold that. He, he says to me, you know, and he starts shelling this, so you don't in, in Atwater McDonald's. You know, I know you know. God's told you, and now I have to tell you. He says, you know, you know. And I'm sitting up there, and I'm saying, 
Jesus, what do I know? What am I, spo- what am I supposed to know here? With and- the knowledge. <laughs> so anyway, um, the word author of confusion is what he picked out and what he heard. And what he said to me was, I have been all day down at the library trying to get books on how to put a spell on this woman that get her to love me so I can marry her. And this is the degree that we sometimes go, you know, to get our own way in our self-pity. Anyway, I, I said to him, you know, young man, you've opened your door to your heart Which to path? the devil. And I says, now you have to close it. And I says, I can't do that for you. Judy can't do that for you. These ladies can't do that. You have to do that for yourself. But I says, I'll tell you one thing. If you will do it, I will pray for you. Well, he said, yes, yes. I says, okay. And I got him to pray and renounce it. And then I put my hand on his forehead. This was the first time I've ever prayed for anybody this way. But they prayed for me this way, so I just did what I knew. Put my hand on his head, and I put a little cross on his forehead and covered him with the blood, his mind with the blood. And I took authority over that thing, and I said, you have to go in Jesus' name. Nothing happened. So I repeated it. Nothing happened. I said, Lord, please don't leave me out on this limb. Do something here. (laughs) All of a sudden, I've got my eyes closed, and I hear this young man start yelling to the top of his voice, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. And I open up my eyes, and he's standing up with his hands up in the air, and his face is just the glowing like, I'm telling you, like a 5,000-watt bulb. And I, he's just a yelling this in the restaurant. And this, everybody had cleared out by now. And this young man who was doing the sweeping was way over the other side. He comes over, and he's about a table away from me, And he's got his broom going back and forth like this. And it's really not sweeping anything. It's just going back. And he's got his eyes on what's going on over at our table. But praise God, that boy got set free that night. We drove him home. And I'm in the back seat with him. And he turns to me and he goes, do you know I'm a Jew? Well, I said, praise the Lord, I'm a grafted Jew. Because at that time, I thought I was a Gentile. I learned since I am a Jew as well. But you know, a week before this trip to Montreal to see my friend, I prayed and I asked God, I said, God, I've led these people to you that are Gentile, but I want to win a Jew to you. And here, God, a week later, had me make this trip, and God got this boy back on his right track, and I've been praying for him, and I know he's in victory land. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So I think we're done.